The next part, um, of course, is the car. Um, I wanted to go Japanese um, originally, um, something one JZ, two JZ, uh, but yeah, like I said, shoestring budget, and some of the Jap cars are just going for stupid amounts of money because of how popular drifting is right now. So I reluctantly, I say this strangely because I have, um, I have one already, but I reluctantly went for a BMW. Now I drive a five series. Um, every day so you think I'd like them I do like BMWs I think they're great but I like the Jap look for a drift car so it, it didn't really appeal to me but it was more in my price range so after scouring about on many many bids uh, I ended up um, winning a bid on an E36 um, and I paid just under 1500 for it but in the pictures I knew it needed some work and when I got there, I knew it needed a bit more work. And since I've had it here, which is about, f I think we're five, six weeks into having it here, it needs a lot more work. Loads of parts of it are actually dangerous. Um, so anyway, I will show you the car. I bought it for one and a half thousand pounds. It originally came all painted up already. In fact, this side, because I haven't sanded it down. It came looking like this. It's... Uh, it doesn't look too bad from a distance, but actually the paintwork is unbelievably shocking. Um, it's original Dakar Yellow 2 on the inside, um, which we'll see in a bit. And he wanted to do it like a wrap, so he left like the uh, the yellow edges. And initially I thought, oh god no. And, but now, actually, as we were working on the car, I've spent more and more time with it. I actually like that look, so when I respray it in um, gloss black, again but properly so it's actually flat and there's no runs down the bonnet um yeah i'll leave the the yellow edges because i kind of like it um so yeah it, it came all painted up um, it came with the original i say original sorry it came with the vents on the bonnet um which were full of runs absolutely full of runs coming all the way down it looked absolutely it's embarrassing as hell he just painted over the original bmw badges and no, it was it was pretty shocking really. So um the vents are off. In fact I didn't take them off, the vents fell off while I was sanding the bonnet, which kind of shows the workmanship going on here. So yeah, they're gonna be on there. Uh, in fact what I'll do is I'll put a couple of pictures up while I'm on the bonnet of how it originally looked when I got it. As you can see, yeah, the white uh white alpina wheels. Um, I'll show you a picture of the exhaust at the back. Oh yeah, look at those cans. Now they are obviously wonky as sin, and the pipework going to them was uh, way too small. It was absolutely tiny. So I'll show you the back because um, we've custom made an exhaust. Um, on the front, uh, see, I should have started this a bit earlier than what I did because we've done a lot of work to it already. And unfortunately, I haven't done any videos for it. But I've, um, the proper bonnet catches are going in there. Um, the grill's been remounted. Um, I've put clear indicators on the front because I don't like lots of colours. I don't like orange. Um, so I want to stick with the black, yellow and white theme. So the clear indicators have gone on because they're not orange. Um, on this side though, um, you can see there... None of that was actually attached when I bought the car, when I drove it back from Manchester. And he said, I wouldn't drive it back, I think you're mad. Um, and then I realised why pretty soon. Um, the wheel was catching, well it was, hitting, it was hitting the bumper, it was hitting the arch, and it was hitting the wing, uh, and the extra trim there. Um, so it was basically undrivable. I didn't make it back, but um, it did totally destroy it. I don't know if you can see that, but like there's massive chunks missing out the tyre walls. So there's a new tyre coming straight up. Uh, that's why it's flat. Because, uh, pump, well, I say that's why it's flat. When I pump it up, it stays up for a day. And then I take it dead again. Uh, clear indicator's going on the side. The sills, I'm going to have to do something about the sills. Because the sills keep popping off. So I'll do some quick fix. So, yeah, if the, when, the, when they pop off when I'm drifting... Who am I kidding? They're going to stay on. When they pop off, I can pop them straight back on again. Um, I've put some some of the 
little hope the what do you call them quick release quick release fixings and say them on the back I've put them on um because I know the bumpers are going to be torn off at some point the back arches are fine as you can see the back wheel hasn't been painted um as the front ones were the alloys are getting sent off week after next to Andy at uh, Total Wheel Solutions and he's going to powder coat them white again with the black inserts because I kind of like that look it's kind of nice so obviously doing all four but well I shall write this on the front they're 18 inch and the sit when, when it's facing forward they look mean as so I don't want to take them off I like them on the back however they're 18s they do look mean as but and there is a but the tyres are way too expensive to be using for drifting. So what I did was I got my mate Binti. Uh, well, sorry, I didn't get him. Binti came up with a, a set of copies. Um, you can tell because the valve is not there. It is there. Just a cheap set that look um, like my Alpinas. But um, the 17-inch, and that now drops the tyre price to a rather reasonable £25 a tyre. I'm uh, happy with £25 a tyre. It's, yeah, that'll get me 100 quid, gets me four, obviously. And then that should do me for a weekend. Because we're not talking about oodles of power in this car. So I'm not expecting it to be a massive smoke machine. 